Hey guys, I'm Kevin Tates working with LMC Truck to bring you some technical information and how-to videos designed to make your truck project turn out even better. In this video, we're going to address a problem that a lot of older trucks have that are equipped with factory power windows. Check this out. The truck not running and the key on. The window motor, it works great until about the midway point and it kind of slows down. This has got a brand new lift motor, new weather seals, everything is lubricated in ship shape. And even on the down motion, it just seems like the motor is laboring. That's because of the current path going to the switch and then to the motor itself. There's a solution for this problem and it's really slick. Check it out. This is an LMC truck exclusive product. This is the heavy duty power window harness and it's designed to draw power directly from the battery and put it right to the power window lift motor and eliminate that problem of the slow motor, especially in the mid range motion. This has the harnesses that you need, a fuse holder, all the connectors and terminals that you're going to need, including the inline fuse to properly and safely connect your window lift motor directly to the battery. Now you're only seeing half of the kit here. This is the driver's side. That's because I've pre-installed the passenger side. It's essentially the same project, the same connections. But the driver's side has more lead because it's farther away from the battery in our truck. Now if you tear your door apart and you find yourself needing some parts, check out your LMC truck catalog or go to lmctruck.com. You'll find everything that you could possibly need to rebuild your door. Window regulators, lift motors, switch harnesses, even the bellows between the door and the cab. Everything that you need, you can rebuild your truck from the catalog. We may not need everything on the table, but it's nice to know that LMC truck can provide it for you. Now let's talk about what kind of tools it's going to take to do this project. Basic hand tools will get this job done, but we are doing a wiring project, so you're going to need the proper tools to crimp wires, cut them properly, strip the sheathing back, as well as shrink tube. Now there are crimp connectors, but we're also going to show you some soldering techniques, so you'll need some soldering equipment if you do it the same way that we do. A couple of cable ties come in handy, and a cordless drill, you've got to find a pathway through the firewall, so a cordless drill and a step bit is going to be your best friend too. Now what have we got a coat hanger in the tool pile for? Well, we're going to show you and it's going to save you some time. But as with any wiring project, step one is disconnecting the battery. Keep in mind this kit comes with detailed instructions, so all you have to do is follow along with them and you'll be fine. Now we're just going to expose the positive terminal since we're drawing power directly from here. With the door panel removed, step one is locating the relays to the bolts that hold the armrest bracket on. Do this one at a time. Now the long harness doesn't necessarily always go on the driver's side. Our battery is on the passenger side, so the longer harness goes to the door that's farthest away from your battery. This is the power feed from the cab, and it goes in and loops in and around through here down to the motor. So this is in fact our power source for our window lift motor. With your brown and your blue wire identified, you want to separate them and get ready to make some connections. Do you want to expose your wires for your connections. Now the kit provides you with all the butt connectors that you're going to need to finish this project. However, we're going to do a permanent installation and solder the connections rather than use a mechanical connection. It's always more reliable to solder your electrical cables. First we'll connect the brown wire from the relay with the silver dashes to the brown wire that goes to the window switch. Cover up the connection with some shrink tube. Next, we'll go from the blue wire with the white stripe from the relay to the blue wire that goes to the window lift motor. Cover the connection with shrink tube. Warm it up a little, check those wires. Now keep in mind that with your door trim panel reinstalled, there's room underneath the bracket here for the relays and the wires, so no worries on wire placement just yet. So now we're going to go with the brown wire with the blue stripe from the relay to the brown wire that goes to the window lift motor. 
Now, if you find that your shrink tube doesn't really fit over top of the wires you're trying to fit it over, here's a trick. Use needle nose pliers and just gently spread the end of the shrink tube open to create more of an opening to slide your wiring in and it usually works out pretty nice. The last connection is the blue wire from the relay that gets connected to the blue wire from the window switch. I like to separate the strands and twist them in opposite directions. That way you get the most current flow over top of this connection. Now we can twist them together, ready for solder. Now the copper is going to change color just a little bit when it's ready to take in the solder, just like that. It doesn't take much heat with a shrink tube. Just kind of an idea of some heat. You don't want to burn it. You just want to shrink it around. And there we go. Now, I like wiring nice and neat, so I'm just going to bundle these wires under here using plastic cable tie. You can get these at any hardware store, parts store, home center. Really nice to have around. Next, we're going to pull the driver's side kick panel off. Now, this right here is the door harness, and this is the seal. It's really tight, so sometimes you need a little bit of persuasion. Be careful. You don't want to tear it. There you go. Then it just comes off, and you've got access now get inside there, get your wires. All right, here's where the coat hanger comes in. It's got nothing to do with clothing. What you're gonna do, straighten out about maybe that much, about a foot of it. With a pair of needle nose pliers, you wanna roll the end to where it's smooth. That way it doesn't hang on anything. And what we're gonna do is push it through the bellows between the cab and the door. That way we can pull our wires back through. We don't have to cut anything. Taking our hanger out through here, follow the harness through the bellows between the cab and the door and kind of just fish it through. It's, it's a fiddly thing, it might take a little bit, but you wanna bend it into a U shape and then just start working with it. And that saves you from having to cut this bellows and feed your wire through there. You never want to be destructive that way. All right, so I got the coat hanger. Okay, now what we're going to do is connect our harness to the coat hanger and pull it through. Bob's your uncle, easy as pie. Now we can just feed the wiring through, pulling the coat hanger while you're pushing your wiring harness. Okay, I can feel it right there. There it is. <laughs> I love it. I love it when a plan comes together. Then we just pull the wiring past the kick panel grommet and route the wiring to the battery. Now, we'll button up our harness with some cable ties. And make it nice and neat. Now we're gonna take the harness, route it to the firewall, tuck it under the carpet and go over to the other side because we're going through the firewall from the kick panel. Okay, now over here on the passenger side, you can see where I've got my passenger door window harness wires running. Now this is the plug for the firewall insulation pad. We've sacrificed that and taken a step drill and just drilled out our hole so we've got plenty of room for both wires without chafing the wires. So now it's just a matter of taking our two wires from the driver's door, feeding them up in, and they'll come out 
on the other side of the firewall and we'll fish them up through and go straight to the battery. There it is, there's our hot wire, there's our ground, just push them through. Now we can make our connections. Now the inline fuse gets connected to our hot wire, which happens. Placing it up inside, you know, you can hear a click. Okay, now it's firm. Now while we're here, we'll throw our fuse in. It's a 15 amp fuse. We can put this somewhere where we can find it and troubleshoot. LMC provides you plenty of wire to be able to tuck them. So we're going to strip the ends and get ready for our connections. Hot wire, that should give us plenty of room. Now just like in the doors, we're going to solder these to make a permanent connection. Okay, here's my ring terminal. What I'm going to do is feed it into I've got a good solid connection there and give it a good crimp. All right, we're going to do the same thing with a positive lead. Pull that guy loose. Find a happy home. It's a happy little wire. I love Bob Ross. Seat for the good crimp. There we go. Ba bam. Okay, now we're going to solder our terminal ends, but you never want to solder over top of your battery. Obvious reasons there's fumes. Don't blow yourself up. There we go. That's a nice solder joint right there. And she turns color. Throw a drop in there. Ooh, look at that. Oh, that's nice. That's what I wanted to see. Now, if you forget to do your shrink tube like I just did, you could do a couple wraps of electrical tape. It makes it look nice and neat and still protects the end of that joint. We're going to take our fuse holders for the left and right sides and just cable tie it neatly to the inside of the fender. But they're out of the way, but we can find them if we have to change the fuses. Now we'll connect driver and passenger hot to the battery. We'll take left and right grounds to the negative side. Now we're ready for a test. The key on. That is awesome. That's exactly what we wanted to see. It's smooth in the up operation, smooth in the down operation. There's no dead spot in the middle. And that is precisely what the kit is designed to do. Draw power directly from the battery. And just like a modern vehicle, there's no slowdowns. Okay, now since this is a direct connection to the outside atmosphere, I'm gonna use some RTV and seal it up. Way we're not gonna have any moisture getting into the cabin. So with a couple of hours of your time and investing in the heavy duty power window harness, you can really improve the function of your electric windows in a 77 through 87 GM truck. We hope we passed on some common sense wiring skills to you as well. So keep in mind, LMC Truck Catalog, lmctruck.com, there's tons of ways for you to get inspired on how to customize, modernize, or restore your truck. For now, I'm Kevin Tates. We'll see you next time.